Hey guys, it's Rottweiler back at it again with another video and today I'm going to be talking about my Rivals of Ether tier list. Or again, I did make a tier list on Twitter recently and this is what it looks like on the screen, yes. Now after some reviewing and uh, really critical thinking here, I want to make one change to this list and I wanted to swap Edelus and Crag. Uh, I like where everyone is otherwise. I like where Raster, Ori, Maple, and Abs are, right, the A tier. But I really couldn't warrant why I wanted Edelus over Crag. Uh, I'll go over that more in depth shortly, but my final decision is just swapping Crag with Edelus here in B. So, all right, let's get to it. So, formatting-wise, I'm going to be going from bottom to top, starting with Claren, though, because I want to make an entire separate video on why I believe Forest, sorry, on why I believe Forest Burn is where he's at. If I was to cover like what the reasons why I think Forest Burn is in that tier, this video would be way too long, or just longer than I want it to be personally. So, we're going to start with Claren. Now, before I really uh, start digging deep in uh, every character here, I need to preface uh, this video by saying that. At the end of the day, the tiers don't matter, but there are characters who have clear advantages over the rest of the cast. When I get to like the S tier, you'll start to see it more clearly, but the way your character is on a tier list does not necessarily mean you won't be able to make uh, top A at a major, right? Or even win a tournament. Like look at Cake Assault, who I believe is playing like the worst character in the game. So the main theme of this tier, excluding Eliana and Shovel Knight, is limited. I believe that Claren, Edelus, and Crag are the most limited characters in the game. All for different reasons, but uh, limited nonetheless. Claren has two major limitations, one being her recovery and two being her general game plan. You can't really go too far out with her game plan, it's always going to be more so sit back and be defensive. So if you're going to run out to Claren, they're clearly going to either F tilt you, jab you, or up tilt you if you're trying to, you know, aerial at them. and that's obviously something you can play around by just bait and punishing, correct? Especially we get to like the top top of the top tiers like Ori and Maple and Raster who excel at uh, bait and punishing. That's actually like the reason I believe they're so high on the tier list is how good and how well they execute the bait and punish strategy. And that kind of stuff is really what eats Claren alive. That's one of her major weaknesses is that if you call out a tilt, she has a lot of whiff lag. And so you can punish that, and honestly, it doesn't take many frames to uh, get comboed hard in, in Rivals. So even though this doesn't look like it's that much lag, right, or this, all these moves would be pretty good frame dead ends, like a game like Ultimate. But in this game, this is enough with lag to actually die. <laughs> die or get opened up for a lot of damage. So you can't just be whiffing moves like this in this game. She has to commit, right? That's one of the things about Claren. She has to take risks when she's uh, take, getting you out or keeping you out I mean right and not only that her game plan if she wants to uh, you know approach for the mix-up right you don't want to just sit here and you know keep getting whiff punished right you gotta make a you gotta make a move eventually so eventually she'll have to like you know try to do an approach and her approach options are also very limited like her dash attack uh, in melee it's like always a meme to approach like your dash attack but in this game it's actually a pretty good approach option for some characters right and her dash attack is no different. She has a very good dash attack. But again, if you whiff this move, it's a lot of lag in this game. It's a lot of lag. You cannot whiff this move like that. And the fact that it's basically her only grounded option to close the, get the gap is very predictable. Like, if they roll behind or parry or jump, well, maybe not jump because it does cover a little bit above her. But if they, you know, just run away from, like, the tip range, you get you get max punished here. And it's, it's not a good feeling. Not only that, but she has this snare. This snare is her other ridiculously good approach option, but even though this snare is ridiculously good, uh, if it's your only option, it's still going to be very predictable, regardless of how good it is, right? If, if everyone knows you're going to do this move, it doesn't matter how good it is if, they, if you can't land it. Her risk reward is not like in her favor, honestly. If, I, if I'm playing Sylvanos, right? And I see a Claren trying to keep me out with the F tilt, like I'm, you know, dash dancing, wait, moonwalking, whatever I need, right? And and I see her throw out this, try to hit me. If I down tilt her, uh, like I, I run back down tilt, and that hits her, I get like 
80 damage if I if I'm playing well, right? I get 80 damage. But what does she get if I if she hits me with this F tilt? Especially if it's not tilt, tipper, she gets a tech chase at best, right? Which is good, but that's not 80 damage, right? Not only does she have to deal with you know her risk reward, her her very predictable approach options, but her recovery. You know, here's the thing about Clarence's recovery, right? Clarence's up B looks ridiculously huge, and it is huge. Look, look at the hitbox on this. This is absolutely freaking ridiculous, right? I can't believe this is a hitbox in this game. And even the second hit is ridiculous. Like, look at that, to say the least, right? And with her other, you know, mix-ups, right? This whole, like, you know, back air from the ledge or wall, side B from the wall. Seems like it's a pretty hard recovery to edge guard, but Claren. As the percents drag on, her recovery gets much, much worse. Why is that? Um, it's because she goes further as she's knocked away, and Claren doesn't have an option to close the distance to the wall that conserves her resources. She almost always has to jump or air dodge to get closer to the wall as the percents drag on. So eventually, when you'll get to the percents where she has to do a recovery like this because she's wasted all her stuff, barely gets to the wall, has to do this right and that's awful because as the opponent because she has to land with all that lag you just wait and then you punish the landing or even if you have a character like absa who doesn't actually care regardless of her percent right again another reason why absa is one of the like the, the s tier characters i put in that tier list is because these characters have options that kind of like ignore some of the other characters options like absa's cloud does not care about this insanely huge move Absence projectile, I think, is the only projectile in the game that cannot be beat by an attack. So, this is really nice and all, but that little cloud will knock you out of this hits, uh, out of this ridiculously big move, and knock you toward the Absa for a kill confirm, or knock you back off stage to where you just start eating five damage per cloud. Now, I am by no means an Eliana player, but uh, every time I fought an Eliana, except for a highlight, uh, it's been pretty free i don't want to say free that's kind of mean but it's been pretty free it just seems like the character has very um what's the word i'm looking for polarizing like a very polarizing kit right her her strengths are extremely strong and that has to be like her, her combo game right and her camping game once it gets started the steam cloud here is extremely obnoxious right and it can control the neutral very well against certain characters certain matchups right and it actually cut off a good portion of the ledge when the, you know a character is recovering. Some characters are, are screwed by this. Yeah, her combos are very, very strong. Probably some of the best in the game. Not probably some of the best combos in the game, right up there with Raster. And like I said before, the limitation uh, theme of this tier doesn't really apply to her and Shovel Knight, and that's because she's not very. She's not really a very limited character. She can get really creative with her her steam, her missile, right, her recovery. Uh, she has a lot of mix-ups. Her combo game even has a ridiculous amount of variety, right? It's very she's a very expressive character, so I can't dare I don't dare call her limited, right? But she's very bad when she's bad, right? So when she's bad is when she gets hit. If she gets hit, she gets blown up harder than any other character in the game. But when she hits you, she is the mo one of the most disgusting characters in the game to get hit by. You if the Eliana is executing you, 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, you've lost your stock, right? If they're executing you, they're dead. There's no DI you can pick because their kit is designed to catch you no matter the DI. Again, I'm not an Eliana player. So that's why it's really hard to put her any higher than this tier because she's very volatile. She's very uh, like chaotic. And because she dies easily off the top because she's floaty, right? She's a heavy that's floaty, which means if she gets hit by a vertical kill move, she dies earlier than a character that's not floaty, right? Like Edelus and Crack were not floaty. They are the hardest characters to kill off the top in the game, right? Even though she has the same weight value as them, okay? So when she gets hit, she's combo for like 80 damage, and then if they get the finisher, she's most likely dead off that 80% uh, combo because she can't live the off the top very well. That's why I can't play Eliana higher than this. She's she's good and she's ridiculously good and she's r ridiculously terrible at the same time, right? Now Shovel Knight is a weird one and he probably has the most potential I feel like of any character in this tier to move up because of how I feel like he's, he's a little underdeveloped by the community and it's because of his shop, honestly. 
people didn't realize how ridiculously good the ghost gloves even were until later in the game, right? So maybe we'll like find out later like his his uh, mobile gear is actually the best because the confirm or the war horn is actually the best, right? We we, we don't know, right? But currently, uh, Shovel Knight is a jack of all trades, master of none, except recovery, right? I think Shovel Knight has the the best or one of the best recoveries in the game up there with Absa and Raster because this. The ability to take a character's model and go wide around the ledge is one of the strongest ways to recover in this game because you're getting above the ledge while also moving away from the opponent so they can't stand at the ledge and hit you, right? This is really strong. A strong way to edge guard. Oh, wow. It's a very strong way to edge guard people in this game is, you know, standing at the ledge and covering their options. If you have a recovery that's doing this, you're going way past all of the shenanigans there and then they have to try to meet you there. And you don't have to take that exact route every time, right? You can do something like this. Right? You can do something like that. That is uh, very ambiguous, right? And it's all because his up air allows him to move so drastically and so high up. So his recovery is ridiculous in mix-ups. And then having this side B, which can also be shortened, charge for longer distances, and this up B that's really hard to contest, right? And has a deceivingly large uh, landing hitbox. All these things combined actually give Shovel Knight a very, sorry, a very strong recovery. The problem with Shovel Knight is that his neutral was quite lackluster until he gets Ghost Gloves. His lack of range, even though he has a disjointed move, I isn't, you know, hit his shuffle, shuffle his shovel. Like, even though he has a shovel, you would think he'd have a lot of range because he can extend his arms out. But honestly, the only time he really has a lot of range is when his F smash, because that's the only time he really extends the length, the full length of his shovel, meaning that you're kind of using a worse or a smaller forest burn knife when it comes to your range. So yeah, not too much to say about Shovel Knight. Like I said before, I think he has the most potential out of any character in this tier to move up. Okay, so moving on to Edelus. Uh, like I said before, I used to have Edelus as like the top of this tier and then I had Crag right below. And I changed that for one reason specifically. His recovery is much worse than, Ed than uh, Crag's and I think that is more important than uh, his on stage game. So Edelus is very limited, but his limitations aren't necessarily the worst, but they're also not the best, right? So when Edelus is on the ground, he is a monster because he has access to this. Dash attacking and wave dashing back is the most some of the most safe pressure you can do in this game. And most non-committal option in the game. And a lot of uh a lot of uh, people tend to stick to the platforms just because they don't want to deal with Edelus' uh, ice, right? His little ice uh, ground control. It's very strong, but this leaves Edelus prone to being platform camped in a lot of his matchups. And if you're not good at that, then the character really doesn't do much but put himself in danger. Because he doesn't really have the best aerials besides maybe Nair, right? Nair is pretty good but it's very laggy if you miss this you're un inactionable for quite a while this entire time I can't do anything right so yes uh, he can be platform camp quite easily and quite often Edelus just likes to be in his little safe space and if anyone tries to overextend and try to hit him he will be the one to uh, strike first not only that but he is really good at invoking a parry reaction because of this People clearly think you're going to just hit them with that, but instead, you're doing this. And then once you see the pair, you can confirm the hit. Again, the reason why he's in this tier, and the theme in this tier is limitations. That's about all you get from Edelus in terms of general gameplay. And if you find anyone who can actually deal with this 50-50, you are essentially useless, right? Your character doesn't do too much. Um, but again, if you hit him, he has one of the best combo games, so, yeah, he, he can he can definitely make a lot out of his hits, so that's always going to be good about him, but his neutral is, like, if I was to say there's one character in this game that could actually potentially go down, I would say it's Edelus, because, again, if it, all he really has is this, that's that's all his, 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 his game plan is, is just wave dashing back out of his dash attack to look for reactions and punish and... Um, just control the ground game. That's really good. But if anyone knows how to deal with that, what else do you do? Now, Craig, his biggest weakness is that his combo game is very lackluster. Craig is a character 
that likes to edge guard. He likes to uh, zone, right? And when you are a zoner and then more of an edge guarder, you inherently give up the ability to take stocks uh, as soon as other characters. And this may be good in, you know, um, like Smash 4 and Ultimate because those games don't really have the punish game of melee and rivals, right? It's not like um, you get opened up and you die, right? That never, that almost never happens consistently in those games. But Craig is a zoner, and he doesn't really kill you off of his interactions until you get to the edge guarding process, and he makes the read, right, on your recovery, and then that read is what will take the stock. But if he doesn't make the read, you get to live, and that's terrible in a game where you can be opened up yourself after you zone them out the whole stock, right? But the Zetterburn gets in once. And then he just blows you up at 80 and you're heavy, right? It doesn't feel good. The fact that he doesn't combo you, especially because people no longer get hit by fair and a fair and a fair and a fair and a f this is a lot more lag. Oh my god, they nerfed you. Fair and a fair and oh my god. Fair and to fair and to fair, right? That's no longer like a thing that you can do to a lot of people consistently at all anymore. Like back in the day, that would be Craig's main combo, right? And it would make him seem broken, but no one's getting hit by that anymore because we know how to DI now. So Craig's uh, output in terms of combos, he's not—he doesn't really have it. So he's—he's he's kind of just uh, limited. He's limited, right? And those limitations are a big deal when it's a combo limitation. Now Orkane, I think I actually have in a perfect spot. I mean, feel free to argue with me if you want, but Orkane has shown offline and online through Zaro and uh, Ralph and Dolphinbeck to always be a really strong tournament threat. I mean, obviously, to say the least, the down smash has shown it, that, that Orkane has an extremely reliable kill potential, even in the most highest tension tournaments. And his control of, over the ledge is ridiculously strong because of these bubbles, right? This cuts off so many routes. I truly don't see how Orkane can be seen as any lower than this, right? And his recovery, people always over exaggerate and say it's terrible, right? Again, I don't see how can it be terrible when you have a recovery that has so many mix ups. So his recovery is more than workable. His recovery is uh, very ambiguous. His, his kill potential is through the roof. Very consistent character overall. Very good neutral. I don't understand how people can say he's any lower than this, but he's not fan he's not like crazy or oppressive or he's not killing people off of a single interaction because again Orkan is a zoner, so he gives up the ability to like zero to death people as consistently as again the characters in the S tier, right? Okay, Rano. Now as much as I don't like Rano, there's no way in hell I can like go without saying he's one of the best characters in the game and has the most rep I think he has the most representation out of any other character in like top fifty and this tournaments in general, right? People love Rano, and he's got a really great design, so that's why you see so much uh, representation. But not only that, another factor to why you see that much representation because he's very solid. He's very reliable. One of the most reliable characters in the game because his kit is super consistent, right? There's a lot, there's few, there's few inconsistencies that happen with Rano, right? Maybe this down air, right? But this is a move that's not really used too much in the first place, right? This up air can be a little inconsistent, I guess, but. It's, it's so it's so like rare when these when these occurrences happen that uh, the character doesn't really mind it right and his neutral is some of the most control oriented and just lockdown neutral there is up there with Absa because he has the darts right darts are fantastic at controlling the pace of the game right you can use them from the air at the at a really good angle which is oppressive for edge guarding right because it sends down. That's very handy and very uh, noteworthy, right? To have a, a recovery, or a, I'm sorry, a projectile that sends a that sends at a downward angle like that, because now you can go out there and pressure. You can confirm if you have four darts. You have four darts, and you, you know throw the needles off stage. He can actually get his legendary combo, which is dart fair. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. But anyway, a very consistent character. You know, he has some of the best kill confirms. In the game, most again, most consistent kill confirms in the game, right? This is gonna kill every character in the game at like 100, right? Or maybe 120 at the most, right? And he's got Dacus, which is a very strong and constant threat the opponent has to remember, right? Like if you if you haven't used this the whole game, right? And your opponent gets a little too comfortable, right? Because they like, okay, I'm gonna watch out for like 
uh, the down tilt range. I'm going to uh, avoid these darts, right? I'm going to play around it, play a little slow game. Out of nowhere, you just do this, right? And then you die. That is just a strong option to have, right? And the fact that in tournament, you have the option you know, just be conditioning them the entire set and then just throw it out. That's 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 a good that's a good option to have. It's a very strong tournament option to have. The thing about tournaments, right, is that your nerves can some at times, you know, screw up your execution and your combo game. Ronald kind of has a semi fail safe for that in this bubble. There's no way you can mess up a bubble combo, right? Even if you get two hits, three hits off the bubble, right? It's still good damage and you put them off stage. No other character has something that allows them to combo ba essentially for free like that. And it, again, in a tournament setting, that's so crucial because no matter how nervous you may be, you getting this tongue, the fact that the tongue takes forever, right? For the bubble to actually come out, gives the Rano a lot of time to breathe and think about what they want to do when they get you in that bubble, right? And, and then knock you off stage, do a combo, right? So no matter, about your tournament nerves, Rano is a very consistent character all around, and his recovery is very workable as well, right? Like he has so many routes, and the fact that this stupid down B is infinite. So let's say the Rano has like does a recovery like this, right? And they use the bubble to try to hop back on stage. Let's say let's say the Adelus hit me there right as I was getting on stage, and I never touched the ground. I get knocked back off. I can just bubble again, and again. And again and again and again and again until I come back for free. But not for free, that's not, it's never free with Rano. Rano doesn't have a good recovery, but he has a lot of chances, right? And in tournaments, tournament settings, having a lot of chances is, you can't really ask for something more than chances, right? You don't really get a lot of chances in a tournament setting. Now, Silvanos, people may say is the most controversial pick on this list, right? Because most people have him as like the worst character in the game, the second worst character in the game. And low key, that's all cap. No, high key. Fuck that. High key, that is all cap. There are like three, four, three to four Sylvanoses making constant top eight in the online brackets and the maybe not offline because well, actually no, Giga Bowser still does some work offline and so does Flary, right? Zora TK, I haven't seen him play Sylvanos too much offline, right? But still, the results are there, right? Because I know the character's kit so well, I cannot say that this character is bottom two or three. The character has disgusting uh, damage output. Silvanos has very good ground speed. He has a ridiculous keep out. He has a decent boxing game, which is a lot to for a character who is so strong at keeping people out. The fact that you even have uh, any uh, resemblance of a boxing game to begin with is absurd, because this means that your opponent, uh, after they get through all your your BS, right? All this this range is absurd. They get through all of that. And when they finally hit you, if you tech in place, you may be able to jab and hit them. It's not the best jab, but if that jab hits them, you get them off of you, essentially. And that's all you can really ask for. Who cares if you get a combo off that? You're a zoner that got your opponent off of you, and you're heavy. You're heavy. So even if they hit you time and time and time again, you come back, you come back, and you come back. And it's so mentally exhausting to fight a Sylvanos who knows how to recover, who knows how to DI, who knows how to keep you out. It's so mentally draining. This is why I think Sylvanos is a good tournament character. He's so heavy that you can make constant mistakes, constant mistakes, and still uh, get another chance. You're heavy, you, you have so many mixes on the recovery, and your combo game is disgusting, your keep out game is disgusting, your boxing game is workable, right? It's decent, workable. You can use it, and your ledge trapping let me don't, don't get me started on his ledge trapping these seeds are so obnoxious right this backer backer hits through the stage even if they they somehow get to deal with the seeds you pressure them off stage very well uh your up air is your most consistent kill option and it kills so many people so often it you can screw up their di with it if you cross them up the character can kill people just over exaggerate right yes there are gonna be times where you do struggle like uh claren or even even raster struggles to kill at times right there are times where even like the best characters cannot kill you absa is a character who can't kill you all the time you know whenever she has to build up your percent to like sometimes some some obnoxious amount until she can kill you and she's again one of the best characters in the game so just because you do have trouble killing sometimes doesn't invalidate the fact that your neutral is powerful your your kill moves are powerful your 
your your spacing tools, your your edge trapping, your 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 your, your heavy recovery. Like there's so many positives about Silvanos. I don't understand how people can just say, like, yeah, he's the worst top, like bottom three. It doesn't make sense to me. Zetterburn is fantastic. He has fantastic movement speed, super fast on the ground, great air mobility. Not Ori level air speed, right? But you are always good in the air. You're always good on the ground. You're neutral. It's fantastic because of your speed, right? You'll, you'll start to see here that, excluding Absa, every character from here on out is going to be very fast. Sylvanos is already very fast. So, because you're fast, you're now able to position yourself uh, better than and faster and swifter than other characters. Now, Zetterburn's biggest strength has to be the fact that no matter how heavy you are, he can kill you early so even though you're heavy and only at 100 percent you're still going to die to zetaburn so that's his biggest strength is is this his strength <laughs> that's his biggest strength right and him being super fast having amazing frame data if it comes down to just the speed of your attack and who's going to hit first zetaburn's going to hit you first especially since he has a frame to shine right that's the fastest move in this entire game so speed in terms of his is, is like movement and his attacks are very high he has extremely strong kill moves well and by kill moves i really mean his up smash but there's so many ways to convert into his up smash it doesn't matter it's like his only kill move because even though this is technically predictable oh yes i know this zeta burn is going to up smash me it always comes more down to all right uh if i get hit i'm going to get up smashed <laughs> Not to mention Zetaburn has some disgusting DI traps like this Nair. This Nair is so good because most times people get hit by multi-hits or just attacks in general, they're going to be holding down and away. Why? Because they don't want to get hit by the follow-up move and the move after that and the move after that, right? That's getting combo. So Zetaburn has this Nair, right? And after Nair 2, you can fair them. And you can't get f far enough away from the Nair to even avoid the next hit but people are holding out regardless because they don't want to eat like max damage combos and if you fair them on that di they are soaring out into the damn ballpark right it's just the fact that zetaburn is so so fast so strong and his moves are so fast that's what makes him such a powerful character right so if you're still here and we've gotten to absa uh you get to hear the thing i was trying to like i was hinting at previously in the video and that is what the top three characters of this game have in common uh, that puts them, I think, over the edge. Oh my god, this gnat, die. The common theme that the top three characters have over the rest, and that would be that they can catch you on DI out. Ori, for example, he has so much air mobility that even if he up airs you and you hold away, he can still get you, especially at like the mid percents, right? Especially, those, those are like the prime percents for what, I'm, for what I'm talking about here. Even if you're holding super hard away, you cannot escape and you still get hit and it's kind of like a, a situation if you're damned if you do damned if you do, damned if you do damned if you don't right because if you hold in the ori can bash you and that bash is going to kill you at like 50 right so you have to hold out but they can still you know catch you on out and that's when they start to feel unfair these are like the, the advantages i'm talking about when i say that some characters just have more than others. And Absa, even though she doesn't have the ability to always combo you on the out because she's a zoner, she kind of gives that up. Like, maybe I shouldn't go Edelus here, but this fair on DI down and away, even at like 30 or whatever, she can't keep she cannot keep it up. I play Sylvanos and I avoid so many Absa fair chains, and I'm a heavy, right? I'm a heavy and I'm big right but i do not get absolute fair chained nine times out of ten because if i drift out on the first one i can't be hit by more and that's the her main way of killing the heavies but there's obviously nerves that come into, into tournaments that you know that can make people want to hold in more and it, and that's kind of why she thrives again because tournaments like the tournament setting matters when i'm talking about the viability of these characters right and because she people love to hold in when they're scared right in a tournament setting especially because their nerves are like are thrive are, or like um you know just going wild right she gets more fair change she gets more free kills she gets more up air fair up air fair down air fair 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 right but even though that's not guaranteed even though she can't catch the dial like the rest of the characters in front of her what makes what makes her since you know orcane's zoner too right sylvan's a zoner too why does she get to be above them in the tier list and that's because she has the strongest keep out game like, yeah, she's a zoner, but she is the best zoner in the game. She has one of the best anti-airs, one of the best recoveries, one of the best keep-out tools with this cloud, right? And the thing about this cloud, right, is that, you know, if it's, on, if it's like here, right, 
um, and you read the apps are doing the little pop, right? It's it's very easy to you know read. If you, not easy, but if you read it, you can parry it and punish her. But if she puts it here, I'm sorry, she puts it here. You cannot parry this cloud. You cannot get rid of this cloud. You cannot interact with her cloud at all. Savano's seeds can be hit, right? Or Kane's bubble or pu bubbles can be parried on on reaction, right? They can be parried even if they you you like didn't react. You can like look at the bubbles, run into them, and parry. Um, there's nothing you can do about her cloud being here, right? And it makes her oppressive because now you can't jump, right? And why can't you jump? Because when you jump, you're vulnerable to this cloud, right? The, the best part is when the apps just start playing around their cloud, right? Playing really evasive over and over and over and around their cloud. Why is that so good? Because like I said before, she makes it so you cannot jump because she'll punish your jump with the cloud. So she's effect she's effectively dancing around the stage while while hitting you for trying to hit her, right? And repositioning herself. And then sometimes if you get hit by that cloud at the wrong time, she can convert off of that hit and kill you or put you off stage, which is where she shines, right? And why does she shine off stage? Because again, this cloud cannot be beat by an attack. It's the only thing projectile in the game that cannot be hit uh, by the opponent. So let's say you, you need to get above the ledge, right? She puts her cloud here. As soon as she sees you trying to climb the ledge, she'll pop it, right? And it knocks you back. And you try again. She knocks you back, right? Knocks you back. But the thing, again, why she's not on the, like, the top three is because this is not killing you. It is safe and effective damage and pressure, but it's not killing you, right? She may even leave it here. And then, like, because you've been getting hit so much, you just want to get out of the scenario. So you may roll out of the corner where she's up smashing you, right? Or up tilting, up airing you, right? Like, that is really good ledge trapping. But this is all not a combo. This is not, like, touch of death. None of this is touch of death. This is why she's, like, the most fair of the S tier character. Say what you will. But in my opinion, she's the most fair because she does not kill you off a single interaction. She gives you multiple chances to play around her. She's not oppressive in the, in the fact that, oh... I can't get hit because if I get hit, I die, right? You're not constantly thinking about playing around every single attack because you could very well die. So like I told you guys before, I put these three at the top, Ori, uh, Raster, and Maple, like top three, right? Because their ability to catch the DI out. And the reason why all these characters, I'm <clears throat> sorry, while the reason why they are where they are in their placements is because the percentage of when they catch your DI out. Maple is the worst of the three because she doesn't start catching your DI out until you're at kill percents, right? So like, for example, if you're at like 100%, right? This is why she's really messed up. Um, let me hold DI out and drift, drift in, right? That is why, right? Now if you had held in on this near, this is what would have happened to you. right so that's what i mean by even if you hold out because you don't want to be fared right she can still reach you all albeit she does have to set you up with a mark right but with the fact that she is, it's from a projectile or her side b which is very fast right it's not too hard for her to set that up if you hold out you're you're screwed and if you hold in you're still screwed previously i mentioned that eliana had the advantage of the top three she just has a lot more weaknesses in them um this is what i meant she can still catch you if you hold down and away right maple even if you hold out she can still kill you right she's very fast on the ground she has a great neutral because she can put down this plant here and play around it right this plant will snap at you if you get hit by it right allowing her to do more setups so you you don't want to get hit by this you have to deal with this by parrying it right to get rid of it but the maple when you're running to it, will hit you, right? And that becomes a 50-50 of, am I going to run up and try to parry the maple, or do I want to run up, try to hit the maple, or run up and try to parry the lily, right? And that is really strong. And then it's even worse when they put the lily up on a platform, because now you have to be very execution. This is where execution comes in. You have to be very sleek, especially if they put on like a smaller platform than this. You have to wave land and then, and then run up and parry it. Um, at a space because if they put on like a really small platform you have to be very fast with that because the lily's going to snap at you immediately once you get in her range and that will leave you open for maple to get in on you because she's so fast even though you might be like she might be this far away she can get there very quickly so 
she becomes really obnoxious by putting this down, cutting off, like Absa, cutting off parts of the stage, or, or making you not want to jump certain places because she has this, and then she's also very fast, right? And her combo game is very good. Ori, uh, Ori is the best character in the game, or one of, the, either, either him or Raster, probably give it to Raster to be honest, but he's the second best, I'll say, at uh, Bait and Punish, because he has this orb. Sign makes a lot of approaches, very ambiguous from Ori, because at one moment he can be here, choose not to attack you, wait for your parry, and then Sign will follow, because Sign follows Ori, Sign will be thereafter, so I can run at you, wait for the parry, you don't parry, I release Sign, Sign punishes you, and that could convert into a combo, or just secure some damage and save pressure, right? And Ori is also extremely fast, especially in the air. Especially in the air. And because he's so fast in the air, he can link together. Like, I, I died because of my air ability. I could have, if, if the Edelus lived that, I still would have hit him. And Ori can do that to you regardless if you're holding out or in. Once he reaches a certain part of the stage, you have to hold in because then you'll die to a back air. Right? You can't hold in on Ori because they'll bash you. I want to make this pretty quick since I think the video has been going on quite a while. Raster is the most broken character in the game and I had to watch Blue to remind myself why I used to keep him number one. Yeah, this character's zero to death potential is ridiculous and it's and it could be off of the smallest mistake you make in neutral. This character can can kill you, but it does take skill. Like obviously Windows isn't doing it nearly as consistent as Blue, right? Windows uh, has a different style of raster, which I don't think is as effective as blue style raster because blue style raster actually emphasizes the part where, oh, you messed up in neutral, you die for it, right? Windows is more like, I'm going to like play more patient, I'm going to get my hits in where I can and kind of like reset. Blue does not reset, and that is where raster shines because raster has the ability to kill you. So why not kill them, right? Not only that, but raster has one of the best recoveries because he just does this, right? If you don't parry that as a free recovery, not only is that a free recovery for Raster, but he can also combo you off of that. For example, like that, right? Everyone's been hit by that. Hold on. Any, everyone's been hit by that. I mean, obviously, that's a computer, but everyone's been hit by that combo at some point in their career. Um, Olive Oily loves to recover like that. Uh, Blue, every, every Raster recovers like that, right? Just come back on stage with a fair, right? And, and the whole uh, thing is now that your opponent has to probably like parry that, right? And if you don't do it, you can also always still back air, right? You don't have to do that recovery. You have other options with NATO, and their good Rasters can like land with this. Like they can stall in the air with a certain number of button presses, then it land almost lagless. Uh, ledge canceling this up B to where they don't get punished for doing it like that or something, right? Carrot has a, a lot of good options for recovery. His neutral is really strong. Great burst potential. Because again, this wind here, slipstream is ridiculous. And even if you want to deny them the wind by pairing it, they can always throw it the other way and still get the wind. And and even if they like fail the attempt or don't feel comfortable you know, approaching you against this important tournament setting, they can just wait for the second one. They can throw it out. Let's say you parry it. Okay, just wait. Just wait. You don't want to run a raster because if raster opens you up, you can die. You don't want to take any unnecessary risks against raster because you're gambling with your life. And that's why he's the best character in the game. I've been recording for like two hours now. I hope I can cram this down to like hopefully like 20 minutes. I really hope I can because I don't want it to be longer than 20 minutes. I didn't even cover fours burn this video. That's how you know this shit is long. Uh, but yeah, all right. I hope you guys are having a great day. Peace out. It's been Rottweiler. Yeah. Flame to your neck, that's a choke slam. Better call a four to assassinate your heart.